Hello guys, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to make this billiard ball animation in Blender. So we're going to essentially make a billiard ball out of these different segments, and they're all just going to kind of nicely slide together, as you can see here in this animation. So if this is something you'd like to learn how to do, keep watching. And just real quick, if you ever want to take your Blender skills further and you want some high quality courses, you can look in the description below, and you can actually use my link to get one month of free Skillshare all in the description below and you can even check out once you do that some of my courses they're all blender at the moment and they take you step by step from making some really awesome projects and it comes with all of the files and resources and it's just really cool so far i've had hundreds of students and the feedback has been fantastic so in the description below and let's get started with this tutorial so let's select all of the default objects and press delete and we're going to go shift a we're going to go to mesh options and let's add in a uv sphere Let's go over to our UV sphere settings and we're gonna go 64 by 64, whoops, 64, there we go, um, segments. And then we're gonna go ahead and close it. The reason we want it pretty dense is because we're not adding any mod modifiers to this once we have it um, cut. So we want it to be as geometrically dense as we can right up front. We're gonna right click, we're gonna go shade smooth. In fact, let's just right click and let's go shade smooth auto. That's gonna be important later. So automatic smooth shading. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna add in a cube. Now keep in mind, I'm looking at references when I do this. So I recommend you open up Google. For copyright reasons, I obviously can't always show everything, but just look at some billiard balls and kind of get an idea. But I'm gonna go with one I'm looking at. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go S, Z and kind of scale this down. I'm gonna scale it down, I'd say probably about to this point here, like so. And then we're gonna go S, Shift, Z, and we're just gonna scale it out along the different axes like this. So that was S, Shift, and Z, like so. And um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a ball, and we're gonna go over, in fact, let's first of all go Shift, D to duplicate it, right click to let go. And with this duplication active, we're just gonna press H, and that's gonna hide it. So you can see we can't see it at the moment. And then let's select this one that we do have. Let's go over to our modifiers. Let's give this a Boolean modifier. Click on the eyedropper and then select this cutter object. And then what we're gonna do is, at the moment it should be set to difference. We're gonna leave it at that and we're gonna go ahead and apply. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the sphere up here. So see here in our collection. And then we're gonna turn on the previous one, which was the duplication. And we're gonna grab this one and we're gonna give it a Boolean as well. We're gonna click on the eyedropper and select a cube. And this time we're gonna go with the intersect. I'm going to come to the drop down and apply and let's select this cube now and press delete and let's unhide our previous sphere segment. So now we have this one over here and this one over here. For now, let's select this um, one over here, tab into edit mode and let's just select the top face, like so the top verts, all of these. And let's just press P and let's go separate by selection, tab back out. So now we have this piece here. And we have this piece here in object mode as two separate pieces. And then obviously we have this bit here in the middle. So let's select the top section. Let's come over here and call it top. Let's select the bottom section. Let's come over here, double click and call it bottom. And let's come over here to the sphere in the middle. Select that, double click and let's call that middle. Like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our front orthographic view. We're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder. Let's go over to our cylinder settings. Let's make it 68, like so. And let's drop down and let's go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter to rotate the cylinder. We're gonna go S to scale it down. And in our front orthographic, we can go to wireframe if this is easier, but just scale it till we have it about here. And we're gonna go S, Y, and we're gonna scale it on the Y. And we just want it to not be touching the top here, but to have a little segment to have a little segment down here like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna select this middle bit. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. And you can see here we have middle.001. We're just gonna go and hide it. We don't wanna see it. Then let's just select this middle bit and let's go ahead and give it a Boolean. Click on an eyedropper and then select the cutter object here. It should be set to difference. We're gonna go down and apply. And then we're gonna hide this middle bit here and then go to the middle.001, which is the duplication. Grab this guy now and let's give that a Boolean. Click on the eyedropper and then select the cutter cylinder. And let's make it intersect. And let's come to the drop down and apply. Now we can go ahead and unhide the other one. 
And what we can do now is select the cylinder and press delete. So now we have this bit here in the middle. We have this bit here. We're going to press A to select everything. We're going to right click and go shade auto smooth. And now if you pull that out, you can see it's automatically shaded. So now we have our billiard ball, but one more thing, we want to add the number. So we're going to go shift A. We're going to go over to our text options, add in a text, RX90, press enter. And let's tab into edit mode and let's just go backspace. And you're going to type in nine. So type in nine and you can tab back out and let's just go G, Y and move it forward. So whenever you um, add text, you can tab into edit mode and it's inside of edit mode where we can type to add in um, whatever you want. So we have a nine now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press F3, and we're gonna type in convert. I'm gonna convert this to mesh. We're gonna tab into edit mode, select everything, and then go E to extrude and Y, and extrude it out just to make a long tube like this, and then tab back out. Then you're gonna go into your front or graphic view, and you go G, and you're gonna move it. Now you might have to scale, but you wanna actually move it, place it nicely in the middle. I'm going with a nine here, by the way. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this middle section or the middle.001 and um, let's just double click on it and call it round. Okay, so the round bit here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift D to duplicate that and now we have a duplication of that. We're just gonna hide that duplication. Select the main round bit here. Let's go ahead and give that a Boolean. Click on an eyedropper and click on this nine object. Come to the drop down and apply. And then we're gonna hide that object over here, bring back the auto duplication, select it, and now we're gonna give that a Boolean as well. Click on the nine over here. And this time we're gonna make it intersect. I'm gonna to come to the drop down and go ahead and apply. And then let's unhide that round. Select the nine and then press delete. So now we have the nine object here. You can actually go ahead and grab it. And then you have this thing over here, which is kind of like the round bit where the nine sits inside of. So we have like one, two, three, four, five segments that we can now animate. So speaking of animation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these different objects here in the scene. So we have all of these bits. In fact, let's just click on this round dot zero zero one. Let's just call it nine, okay? I just like naming things when we're working like this. It just makes it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select everything. So we have it all active. Make sure it's only these bits in your scene. And what you're gonna do is, whoops, we're gonna drag this up over here. We're gonna to come to, I'd say 95. Now you could do this however you want. I'm just gonna go with this sort of time frame, And we're gonna press I. We're gonna insert a location keyframe for all of these bits over here. If you wanted to do rotation, you could do location and rotation, but we're just gonna be working with location. Um, actually, let's just go into um, our front of graphic and go G, Z, and hold in control and just snap it till it kind of snaps to the top here. So it's sitting on the floor. And let's once again press I, and now let's insert a location. So at least we're sitting on the floor here. Now this is where everything's gonna be when it comes to frame 95. But between frame one and frame 95, that's where we're gonna be animating the individual bits. So let's come over to frame one. And on frame one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable auto keying. So we're gonna enable our auto keying. We're gonna grab this bottom bit here we're gonna go ahead and press G and Y and we're gonna move this just over like so. So G, Y, and it's automatically keying that in on frame one. And we wanna actually move it quite a bit away so we don't kind of see it when the camera's looking at this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag through, so between there and frame 90, that bit's gonna come there. But what we can do to have it a little bit earlier than the rest, in fact, let's just go ahead and animate all of these bits. We're gonna grab this bit here. We're gonna go G, Y, and move that one back on frame one. Let's grab this one here and go G, Y, and move that back as well on frame one. And let's grab this thing over here, the middle bit. We're gonna go G, Y, and maybe move that one back. And then grab this nine and go G, Y, and move that one forward, like so. Now they're all keyframed like this. So what's gonna happen between one and frame 95, they're all gonna to come together, which looks really boring. So what we're gonna do is between that point, we're gonna go ahead and select all of these different objects. And now what you can do is you can select them, turn off auto keying, and then just grab this 95. So for example, we're gonna grab the middle bit here. I'm gonna grab this 95 fifth keyframe. We're gonna go G and kind of move it over to frame 70. So this one will be here before the rest. See here? It comes there before everything else. 
And what you can do is you can now go and select all the other bits. So let's grab the top bit. The top bit, let's drag it back to 80. And now that's gonna be offset a little bit, like so. And then let's grab this thing over here, the little cylinder in the middle. Let's grab that and let's go and move that over to, I'd say, 85. Like so. And then let's grab the nine. And the nine, we, we probably want that to be one of the last things that slides in. So we'll leave that at 95. But everything else, we can pretty much set back as much as we want. And at this point, it's just about kind of grabbing the individual keyframes and just dragging the end keyframe to wherever you want. Now this is completely customizable. That's why you guys can do it however you want to do it. But as long as they all kind of come together at a, by the time frame 95 hits, that's what we're really looking for. So if we go to frame one, and let's just set this to 100 frames over here on the end, we should really see it all kind of coming together. And you could even at any point you want, grab one of these pieces, come to frame one, enable auto keying, and you can at any point move them in different positions so that they'll actually come from a different direction. But just think about where they have to slide in. You might not be able to do the same thing with these ones over here, but it's just kind of fun to play around with that. You can even maybe grab this bottom disc, go to frame one, and maybe move that one over to the side. So it kind of comes in from the side like this. And this is a really kind of fun way of playing around with these little bits and kind of making them all kind of come together like this, as you can see here. But once you have them sliding together the way you want, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go Shift A, you're gonna add in a plane, you're gonna go S to scale that plane up, and then you're gonna come in, let's come over to frame 95, and we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera, and let's go G, Z and move the camera up. And let's go to our top view and then move that camera out. And now you have your camera. So you can position your camera however you want. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over and enable cycles in our render settings. We're gonna go over to the render options. Let's make it 50 for the render samples. And now let's go shift A, let's add in an area light and move that up. Let's give it a strength of 200 and increase the size to two meters. Now we're gonna go Z, we're gonna go rendered. Let's go Control B and just drag over our camera to limit the render to our camera. And at this point, you can duplicate your light and rotate it in from different positions, just so you get some nice lighting on your billiard ball here. But the idea here is just to have it kind of set up in the middle of the camera with some nice lights on it. And so at that point, we can actually select the individual bits. So let's select this middle bit first. Let's go over to our materials, let's click New. And in my reference image, it's yellow. So I'm just gonna call it yellow. And I'm gonna come here and make the base color kind of like a yellowish kind of color. And I'm gonna bring the roughness all the way down. And now if I go Z and I go rendered, I can see I have a reflective yellow. I'm gonna now select the top bit here. I'm gonna go new, call it white. And it's not gonna be truly 100% white. So we're gonna come here and just make it a little bit off white by dragging it down into the yellow a little bit. And we're gonna bring the roughness all the way down to make it reflective. And let's just grab this bottom bit here and give that that same white material. And this bit over here, give it that same white material. And then let's grab the nine, go new, and let's call it black. And then let's come and make it kind of almost black all the way and then bring down that roughness all the way. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we have our materials. Now, what you could do is you could add some roughness, some scratches, some bump. Um, go ahead to make it look like this thing has actually been used. But for the tutorial, I'm gonna leave it at this for now. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select our floor here. Now you could give it whatever texture you want, but I just found kind of like this matte, like kind of like um, grid texture online. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, you could add whatever texture you want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it. I'm gonna go to my base color, go image texture. Like I said, I definitely recommend you guys get whatever texture you want. So it's just kind of like this matte thing. It's kind of like this cutting board. And um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna use for my texture. I might go into my UV editing, kind of scale things to match a little bit, but this is not the main thing here we wanna focus on in a tutorial. Um, you guys could use whatever you want for your um, billiard ball. The idea here is just to have a nice surface, have your balls animated, the, the little bits coming together, and with your camera, you can also select your camera. And under your camera settings, you can enable depth of field, 
click on an eyedropper and okay what we probably want to do is go shift a and just quickly add in an empty i think then move the empty up and then you can select your camera again enable depth of field click on the eyedropper and then select that empty object and then bring your f-stop down just so you get this nice soft focus and that's just going to make your billiard ball look a lot cooler so let's go ahead now and save go to our render settings quickly as well and just enable motion blur and let's kind of drag through so kind of where this nine comes in here and let's go ahead and render and render image and let's see what it looks like and there we have it it's now rendered you can see we have some nice motion blur from the movement here but what you can do now is you can render out these sequences you can compile them together and just kind of render out your animation and so it's going to be a very satisfying kind of animation you can always mess around with your animation quite easily to get different kind of you know positions different kind of effects and maybe add some rotation to some of the bits um, but you know it's something fun to experiment with i hope you guys like this concept um, if you do you can definitely get the file on my Patreon. You can look in the description below. You can check out my Skillshare page where I have Skillshare that you can check out for free for one month if you use my link. So there's all sorts of cool resources down there. You can even follow me on Instagram. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.